Cool. Thanks a lot for having me here. Thanks for setting this whole event up. I know Anthony and the whole team at ETC Co-op's done the amazing work. Um, I'm going to talk, talk to you today about what the past year and what I hope the next year for ETC looks like. My name is Darcy Reno. I'm the program manager for ETC Dev. Uh, before joining the team, I was a CEO for a software as a service company with a million users and the CTO for the largest uh, animation company in Canada. I've been with ETC Dev for about six months and having a good time. Uh, we've had some big milestones this year. Uh, ETC turned, uh, turned two years old, uh, which is a big deal when you consider how, what a tough birth it was. It was a tough birth on the whole community, uh, for everybody involved. It was, a, it was a community left scrambling to find exchanges, um, find a name, find a developer pool. Um, nobody knew if ETC was going to live. And it did live. It's thriving. Today, exchanges and investors love ETC, or they like ETC. Uh, we got solid volume, 121 trading pairs, 62 exchanges, just went live on Coinbase, Robinhood recently. It's doing really good. We got a lot of good momentum. Over the past 10 months or so, we've had two hard forks. Both of them focused on building a sustainable and healthy uh, crypto economy on the platform. The first one was back in December of last year. Uh, it was the mon new, a new monetary policy, which was really designed to um, put the coin into a deflationary phase in the future and ensure that there's very predictable mining results and mining rewards. So we can ensure that there's long-term support from the mining community. Um, back in spring, we rolled out something, or we removed something called the difficulty bomb. Um, the difficulty bomb was, um, it was a tool used to force protocol level changes and, and roll out new consensus mechanisms on, on foundation Ethereum. Um, things like proof of stake and stuff like that. You know, for ETC, we believe in proof of work for the sustainable or the foreseeable future. So we just thought we'd remove the difficulty bomb once and for all, make our lives a lot easier so we weren't for forking just to keep up with an algorithm. So how does ETC Dev fit into this ecosystem? Um, a lot of people ask me um, what we do. They don't understand our role. Um, a lot of people think that we actually made Ethereum Classic. People have said that to me at conferences um, and on social media, and it couldn't be farther from the truth. Ultimately, we're members of the community, like all of you. Um, we're a passionate team of engineers and admin people and managers like me that believe in the fundamental principles of blockchain, immutability, decentralization, stuff like that. Um, and this is who we are. We're 14 people today, fully distributed team, seven countries, and we're basically building a sustainable business around building open source software. We're attracting top talent from companies like this. And we're currently recruiting. We're looking for Go, JavaScript, Rust developers. So anyone that knows developers looking for roles, remote roles, check out our job board. And if you don't see anything, just reach out. Oh, I've got to keep up. So we've been really busy over the last year. Um, we did, a lot, we did a lot of work that went unnoticed for a couple of reasons. A lot of the work that we've done is protocol level improvements, stability, stuff like that, um, new opcodes. Um, and we weren't very good at telling the world when we would roll out new, new changes. We'd just uh, drop new code, new uh, binaries, uh, without notifying the community. Uh, this year, we're getting a lot more vocal, and we're also working on more user-facing software um, we're working closely with uh, the ETC Cooperative and, uh, and IOHK in spreading the word, trying to announce releases before we actually go live with them. Uh, you can follow us on social media and um, see all of our announcements for when we're going to release new code. So Emerald Wallet. So 
Over a year ago, the community needed a wallet, so a number of developers started building one. It wasn't an easy project. Uh, multiple releases, going from alpha all the way to version one. Uh, it took well over a year, um, but we finally released version one a couple months ago. The community feedback has been excellent and very supportive. Um, we think it's a very solid release, and we've been happy, we're really happy to move on to new challenges going forward. The wallet's been downloaded 22,000 times, so people are actually using it. Um, in the last nine months, We've done over 900 uh, Git commits. Um, Geth has been downloaded uh, 9,000 times. So we've got a lot of users out there, a lot of test, test and production installs uh, of, of active software users. And we're getting a lot of great f feedback from the community. Um, what else did we do? This year we've uh, rebranded. Um, so we got some new colors and logos. Um, and we officially became a company. Before this, we were just kind of a, an unofficial team of collaborators. Um, we're based in Zug, Switzerland. Uh, that's our office, apparently. If I do a good job up here, the, the team's going to tell me how to find it. Uh, these are our new logos um, for all of the projects that we currently maintain. Um, and most importantly, we've got a new mascot. It's not that. That's, we didn't like that one. We didn't like the minion either. Ultimately, we liked the green, so we stuck with it. We just made it a little more modern and friendly. Um, so kind of with regards to serious work that we've been doing, obviously Geth is a large, a large uh, component of what we, what we build. Um, so we've really been focusing on rolling out stability improvements, uh, configuration management, um, and logging, and all this stuff sounds kind of boring and is pretty transparent to most users. Um, ultimately, we know that it's really hard to get insights out of Geth, and we wanted to build a dashboard. But we didn't want to build it ourselves. Um, go back. You know, we wanted to give developers uh, a set of tools for collecting data analytics um, that they're familiar with. So we. Our M-logs release for Geth um, allowed for um, uh, Logstash support, and Logstash works with um, Elasticsearch and Kibana. So now you can take a typical Elk stack, which most full-stack software developers are familiar with, um, and start visualizing your, uh, your Geth, uh, the ETC network. We think that kind of stuff's important as we roll out things like side chains, software development kit. We think that developers are going to need to have better business intelligence and data intelligence on the applications that they build. So the other thing we've been working on is Sputnik VM. So Sputnik is an alternative to the Ethereum VM. It works today, it's built in Rust, and it'll be continue to be compatible with everything we build in the future. Um, we feel that having another VM is important in reducing our dependence upon um, foundation if, uh, EVM and for enabling new jobs that the existing EVM can't, just can't handle. Um, the biggest challenge that we've had with, uh, with Sputnik is finding Rust developers that are experts in virtual machines and compiling for low-powered devices. Um, we went a few months at least without having anybody on the team, uh, which was a big setback for Sputnik. But uh, I'm happy to say that we've hired two new developers in, the, in recent weeks that are 100% focused on Sputnik VM, and um, they're already starting to make uh, quick progress and new features and whatnot. So many people think that we built the wallet to be a standalone product. But we're not a wallet company, and we're never going to be. We really built wallet, or what wallet has turned into, is more of a demo for our software development kit. And we call it Emerald Platform. Emerald Platform consists of a starter pack for deploying smart contracts to the blockchain, um, an easy to use software development kit, and a documentation site 
documentation sounds pretty boring, but in this industry, it's pretty good to have up-to-date documentation. Um, Emerald is essentially a tool set for developers to build dApps and deploy smart contracts. Um, we've got a presentation later today by a couple of the guys that wrote um, the SDK and all the tooling around it, so definitely check that out. There's a, a detailed workshop tomorrow, a one-hour workshop, so any developers in the room should definitely check that out if they're curious about building dApps on Ethereum Classic. Uh, documentation. We believe the most important thing to be building is, a, is not software, but it's a community. Um, and for ETC dev, that means third-party software developers. And ultimately, developers need really good tooling and they need better documentation. So to prove our commitment to excellent documentation, we've brought a full-time technical writer onto the team. And we've recently launched a new documentation website, which went live, I think, today. Um, so you can check that stuff out here. Um, I think that's all I had to say there. <laughs> So what does the future for us look like? Um, we're really establishing EC ETC Dev as a business that enables other businesses to adopt blockchain technology. Um, we're doing it through providing education, we're providing support, and we're really partnering. We've gotten a lot of feedback from companies that have told us um, that there's no way they could adopt ETC because there's no built-in support mechanisms for business. Um, businesses don't want to become blockchain development companies. They need to focus on their core competencies. So with partnering in mind, I'm happy to say that we, uh, are, we're, we've been working with the OpenStack public cloud passport um, team to put the OpenStack cloud trials program onto ETC. For those of you that, that don't know what OpenStack is or are unfamiliar with them, they power, or their software powers, the largest public cloud footprint in the world. Um, it also powers private clouds for companies like CERN, um, NASA, DreamWorks, um, Bloomberg, and thousands of other clouds. Um, so this is real business with real problems at real business scale. So business scale is, is quite scary when you think about the scalability of blockchain technology today. Um, I think the entire community is talking about ways of increasing blockchain performance you know, through side chains, through um, lightning networks, through like, you name it. Um, ETC Dev has been researching uh, ways of increasing uh, blockchain performance for several months now. Um, And we believe, we believe in, in side chains as being the most achievable um, method of uh, increasing performance um, in the form of permissioned and private and semi-public blockchains that can then interact with the main network. Um, we also feel it's the least risky way of rolling out um, new features, functionality, new um, consensus mechanisms without affecting the security of the main network. So really, allow, we believe that really will allow us uh, to experiment. Um, Sidechains is complex. I'm not going to get into it. It's well beyond the scope of my talk. But Splix has um, some exciting announcements um, in his talk today, uh, which specifically address sidechains and some of our plans um, that we'll be getting into later in the year. Uh, so please don't miss that. Um, so, in building a community, starting immediately, we'll be promoting our Emerald platform. We'll be attending meetups, conferences, um, getting really active on social media. Um, we want to get Emerald in front of uh, developers and as many developers as, pos as possible and build a great developer experience by taking feedback from as many DAP developers as we can. Um, in order for ETC to survive long term, we believe one of the components necessary is build a, um, a healthy grassroots ecosystem of DAP developers to start putting uh, ETC through its paces, start testing new features and functionality like sidechains as they become available. Um, 
you know, I'd love to see ETC become a destination for DApp developers. Um, again, ETH compatibility and developer experiences are kind of re recurring themes in, in my talk. Um, in the name of compatibility, we've proposed a hard fork, which we hope to happen sometime around the end of the year, um, to enable the Ethereum Byzantium and Constantinople releases. Um, a bunch of opcode changes that we'd like to add. Uh, our challenge is that we can deliver every protocol level change and opcode change in a really timely fashion. You know, ETC Dev is a pretty small team, but for the most part, uh, with lots of input from the community, for the most part, we've uh, been responsible for deploying the actual code. Um, and we just have bandwidth constraints, so we're running behind schedule. Um, we can't keep up, basically. <laughs> Uh, in the name of decentralization, I think it's also not appropriate for a single team to be providing all of those uh, developer resources. Um, so I'd like to make a, an appeal to the entire community to provide more development resources for um, protocol level changes and projects focused on compatibility and chain inter interoperability. Um, I think it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's going to be a group effort to be able to keep up with the pace of the industry. Um, we love that, I'd love to see a lead uh, developer for the Geth team come out of the community somewhere. Um, or any kind of compatibility projects be focused on, uh, be driven from the community wherever possible. Um, I know that the ETC Cooperative has been uh, rolling out uh, the Peace Relay project, which is excellent. Um, we want to see more of that kind of stuff. Um, more interoperability projects. Um, oops, that's me again. Anyway, I forgot what I was going to say there. In closing, you know, I see a bright future for ETC. We've got a very stable community. It's a small but growing, doubling in size community every year, it seems. Um, we're being very deliberate. We're moving slowly where it makes sense, and we're moving slowly and surely because we're in it for the long run. Uh, we just need more people to get involved, you know, whether that's developers, whether that's putting uh, positive words out on social media and Twitter and places like that, um, or when you all leave this conference, just go home and tell developer friends about us. Oops. I think that's all I had to say. If there's any questions, happy to uh, address them, and if not, feel free to come up and say hi during the conference. Hello? Okay. Hello. <laughs> I actually have a question. What? So, <laughs> this isn't a pre-set question. I'm not softballing it. <laughs> uh, you said you were hiring for ETC Dev. What are the roles you're hiring for, and how are they going to help with Sputnik VM, Emeralds, all those projects? You know, um, well, we've got two Rust developers on. We're, we're, we want to have three Rust developers on the Sputnik team. Um, it's really just team bandwidth. You know, in the past, we've had a single developer. You know, and there's just a huge bus factor in that. And you can only do one thing at a time. So things just take way too long. Um, plus, there's also, you need a certain amount of brain trust to be able to solve really complex problems, right, and come up with good ideas. Um, yeah, you've got to pass ideas back and forth. Exactly. Um, and not just internally, with the community, which is why we need more developer uh, input from the community in, in, in general. And you kind of keep us honest or just call us out, because we might be wrong. Um, but also just, you know, get really proactive. So the other roles that we're looking for is um, uh, at least one more JavaScript developer um, and a Go developer. But, you know, we're looking for lead level people to come on, some experienced people, architecture level people. Um, and it's just, again, more bandwidth, more projects, simultaneous projects. Um, and, and give us the ability to start doing some research and development rather than just rolling out opcode changes from Ethereum and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so does anyone else have a question? Uh, we've got a couple microphones we can run to you. You don't even have to get up. We have, oh, over there. One sec. Uh, 
Bern International Conference. 감사합니다. I don't hear. It. I don't hear anything. Uh, 최근에 한국에서 그 사이드 체인 관심 되게 많긴 하거든요. 그래서 아까 전에 사이드 체인 얘기를 하셨는데 그 굉장히 많은 회사들이 블록체인 회사들이 그 프로젝트를 만들면서 이더리움 기반으로 어, 그 스마트 컨트랙이라는 강력한 기능 때문에 많이 채택을 했었는데 아무래도 게스비라든지 그 트랜잭션 속도 때문에 그 대안으로서 사이드 체인도 많이 지금 고려를 많이 하고 있거든요. 근데 이더리움 클래식 같은 경우는 그거에 대한 뭔가 좀 대안이라든지 이렇게 제시할 수 있는 그 기술이 있는지 궁금합니다. I'm not hearing a translation. The answer is yes. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that, that kind of cut out. I think I get the question. Um, well, the whole point of sidechains is to provide um, not just performance, you know, but things like alternative um, consensus mechanisms. Um, so the, the, the question was really, a lot of Korean companies are, are, want to adopt blockchain, but they're looking at sidechains as a way to reduce the gas costs, increase performance, things like that. So that's the whole point of sidechains. You know. I think one of the challenges that we have with main networks is that any application you put on the main net, it kind of needs to be of a certain value. Um, and if, if you're not running a valuable job, um, but it still needs things like immuta immutability and, I don't know, governments or uh, data sovereignty, you might actually just be priced out of the market by trying to put it on the main net. So, um, I'm not sure if I'm answering the question. Uh, if you've got, if there's companies that are interested in getting their workloads put onto uh, ETC blockchain, um, feel free to make introductions and we can talk to them about how we can do that. But that's exactly what sidechains is, is about. Performance, uh, managing your costs, and more flexible workloads. Uh, yeah, do we have any other questions? Hello. Uh, what do you mean by alternative consensus mechanisms? Things like proof of authority. You know, Got it. Stuff that's not proof of work. Got it. Yeah. And in the future, that could be proof of stake once a proof of stake methodology is you know, really well baked. Is that it? Uh, do we have any other questions? Don't be oh, shy. There's one at the back. <웃음> 네, 음, 저는 블록체인 개발자이기도 하면서 그 이더리움 클래식에 대한 그 투자도 제 포트폴리오에서 꽤 많은 차지하고 있는데요. 어, 이더리움 클래식이 그 이더리움과 요즘 핫한 그 EOS 어, 이 세계 블록체인에서 이더리움 클래식이 가지는 장점 혹은 어떤 킬링 포인트 같은 게 있으신지 궁금합니다. Um, so what is the, I think the question was, what is the advantage that ETC has over Ethereum and EOS? I believe that was the, um, and the gentleman asking is a blockchain developer and an investor in multiple coins, a big investor in ETC apparently. So I think the big advantage is we've got an honest community. You know, and, and we live up to the principles of fundamental blockchain, you know, which is immutability, um, sovereignty, um, and building unstoppable applications and dApps. So we're still trying to find our value proposition. Um, I think the value is that we've got an established network today. Um, If you are building dApps today, I'd, I'd say come check out our uh, SDK and uh, see how it uh, compares to other options out there. Um, 
That's all I can really say. All right. Uh, anything else? Come on. Somebody else has to have one question. You didn't get any questions. I didn't ask for questions. <laughs> Damn you. I don't want them. It's too tough. <laughs> it is. <laughs> All right. So we're going to take a break. Everybody head out, get some refreshments, stretch your legs, come back here at 1040, and we're going to have a lot more great talks. Thank you. <laughs>